Good morning, Abuja. Good morning, Nigeria. Welcome to Daybreak Extra on Trust the Television. I mean, based on the color I'm wearing, I would say today, uh, the 2nd of December, is looking a bit brighter, you know, and there is that hope of, okay, this is the time that we'll start calculating and going back to, you know, what really happened from the 1st of January this year to this point and if there is one thing you need to be grateful for is to you know being alive witnessing about 12 months you know of 2023 healthy and even though we can say that the economy is not really favoring uh, the masses but we are grateful you know for being healthy that is one of the most important thing so yeah and let's not forget it's december so it is uh, the celebration you know the festive season where family would go back home now, sit with families and uh, reminisce on the year long, uh, you know, things that happened this uh, uh, whole of 2023. But we're hoping that, of course, this month would favor us. Well, anyways, like I said, it is Saturday. It's a beautiful day. So uh, we hope that you are here with us as usual, where we'll bring you interesting uh, packages for you this morning. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I am Fatima Ahmed Musa. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, let me borrow from Sumaya. As you can see from the color I'm wearing, <laughs> it's December. <laughs> it's actually the amber month, um, month right? Mm -hmm. And this is the last one. Indeed. So, yeah, uh, it's, I believe it's going to be a good uh, season. I, I meant to that. The, the, I did you mean, feel the cold well, weather uh, this morning? It's exactly. That it's cold. Even though sometimes, you know, um, at night it gets a bit humid, a mm -hmm. bit hot. Mm -hmm. But then towards the early hours of the morning from 12 a.m. to 1, 2, you start getting the, the cold. The, and then it, it's becoming dusty. Yeah, you know, so. Please, uh, if you have, uh, you know, your Vaseline, pick it <laughs> up it or close any oil <laughs> in order to just take care of your skin because this is the time that your skin needs yeah, you're just more saying it gets humid in the night. Actually, I was actually scared thinking I was sick. Oh, oh because, because sometimes I actually turn off. Yeah, I turn yeah, off my AC when it becomes too cold. Exactly, and then I start wondering. sweating. Okay, this is Hamatan. Why is it that exactly? Hot? You know. So, but then I understand things you just said. Um, indeed, it's humid. It's, it's everywhere. So, so that's yeah. the season. I mean, uh, even according to uh, the meteorological uh, assessment that was done, mm. it says the 2023 the climate is change exactly yeah, the hottest, is the hottest yeah. uh, of all. I mean, last time they could actually uh, uh, compare to was 2020. So yes. I mean, we understand the situation but anyways uh we have an interesting package or show for you this morning two hours of amazing bliss so i uh, do make sure to sit around because later we will be joined by a script writer hmm, i'm not i know you're curious i mean i want to pick on the mind of people that do all the things that we see on the screen and make you know the words sometimes you watch uh movies and then you hear a word that someone said you'll be like how did you come up with this well, the brain behind it, we'll be talking about uh, to a person about that uh, thing, you know, that how they do their creative mind. And also, if time permits, which I know it's been a while, but we'll, we'll definitely bring you entertainment, a gist and gossip, because there's been a lot happening in the entertainment world. But anyways, don't go anywhere. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll start by taking a look at the front pages of the National Dailies. Stay with us. The famed giant of Africa is battling an identity crisis with severe economic downturn. We have seen during Shagari, fall of Naya, but Babangida's time was historic. It was unprecedented. All Nigerians. The Nigerian economy has been in steady decline. No growth and a sharp drop in production makes matters worse. The more you push your economy, to get integrated into the global market economies, the more you increase the use of dollar. How did we get here? We have been working every nook and cranny, running health shelter, trying to seek dollar so that we can also meet with the demand of our people. And the same Nigerians will turn around and say, CBN should supply dollar into the market, or government should supply. Where are you going to supply from? As the value of the Naira plummets, is obsessive comparison with the dollar helping matters. Once people believe that the currency cannot retain its value, they find alternative ways of, of savings. Why is the Naira on a free fall? And what are the solutions? Journey with us back in time to where it all began. Not 
necessarily uh, tribal or regional. Welcome back to Daybreak Extra on Trust the Television. And it's time to take a look at the front pages of the National Dailies. And as usual here, we we'll start with the Daily Trust the newspaper at there. And uh, the front page is packed with a lot of uh, stories. The major story there says, patients groan over rising costs of drugs. Uh, the writers are saying over 70% of medicines imported and experts advocate local production. I mean, are we there yet for people uh, to, you know, produce, for Nigerians to produce drugs? Are we there yet? Uh, and and uh, considering, I think I watched a video earlier um, today where uh, even in, in America, you know, the USA, there is always complaint also of the health uh, sector charging a lot of money where people are saying you go to the hospital and then you're given a teller and you realize that the, the invoice you're given you have paid for a lot of things that you did not even do so it's like there's massive uh, uh, you know inflation when it comes to, to the health sector which is also scary uh, as well considering the economy uh, you know the world inflation because let's not forget it's not just only Nigeria that is uh, uh, witnessing the world inflation all right so another writer there says it's tough treating my aged mom that's according to civil servant i mean fatima with all these things that is happening yet people <laughs> are, are falling sick and 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 we're talking about how people are finding it difficult to even get the basic uh, necessities we're talking of food you, you know your house Shelter, rent yeah. uh, and even uh, transportation mm -hmm. moving from one place mm -hmm. to another and and immediately someone in your family falls sick there's that fear of because how much am i going to, to spend? spend and, and how much have you even saved Exactly. You know, it depends on how much you're even earning. It depends Again, on how much yeah, you're earning. So. Uh, how much is everybody earning? That that should. So be you know, you remember I was doing. saying like uh, someone earning thirty thousand naira, and you're you're having family of four, five, six. Mm. You know, some people have some some men have children like seven, ten, twelve. Exactly. Well, let, let's even just use the minimum wage, which is thirty five thousand naira, exactly. which is super small for what is happening. And and I know that there was a research done on on uh, you know trust uh, television mm -hmm. also about uh, these antibiotic drugs that mm -hmm. all of a sudden skyrocketed. Yeah. Something that you used to buy for about four thousand, five hundred, three thousand, eight hundred. All of a sudden, now it's twenty five. Some 20 people are even something. counting twenty seven to twenty eight. So it's becoming too scary, mm -hmm. you know, for people mm -hmm. to uh, uh, purchase drugs. And another writer is saying that patients now skip dosage to save cost. Yeah. So w w when when doctor prescribe a drug for you, you're supposed to take it for two, two or three, months two. or three months. That is scary. How mm -hmm. am I going to afford something that is so pricey when I'm barely able to even feed myself? And I feel, you know, with this, it can actually push people to start using herbs. Indeed. Because they feel they can easily afford it or just go to the you know bush and just see what they can I mean know, the stakeholders are also pushing on that I mean, there was a, a, a you know stakeholders meeting that happened where uh, they are now promoting trying to uh, bring in mm -hmm. alternative uh, medicines mm -hmm. you know that's talking about the herbals how they would incorporate it into helping uh, the uh, the health sector because at this as it is the fact that we import every kind of drug is taking a toll on yeah, Nigerian definitely. citizens definitely. and it's really sad Another writer there says, exit of pharmaceutical firms, forex shortage aggravates woes. Now we are also seeing complaints from the pharmaceutical uh, firms and industry also complaining how this thing is biting harder. So it, it's really looking sad. I mean, if there's anything that the, the federal and state governments and of course the, the Minister of Health can do, then it will be great for Nigerians. Well, uh, below that, we have again FCT residents raise alarm over rising cases of kidnapping. Security experts prefer solutions. Okay, now this is what we want. Uh, I remember when the budget came out, there was a lot of experts coming out to explain how uh, they expect that the whole uh, you know, um, allocation of this budget should be. So right now we're having 
experts on security also coming out to uh, prefer solutions, which is something that we need to take seriously because based on our budget, security is taking the chunk load of it. So we need other people to give perspective on how this can be solved because the rate of insecurity in Nigeria, it is alarming. It is so scary. People are no longer safe. And I am so scared for, you know, even citizens uh, right now, they are traveling uh, for festivities uh, this season. So I just hope that everyone gets to their destination safe. Um, beside that, we have concerns as 309 die oh, uh, from tanker explosions in three years. Uh, you'll find this on page 28, a really sad situation there. At the bottom of the page, we have Will Barrow Prusha kills tax collector over 15 Naira and commits wow. suicide. Wow. Now, this is 15 one Naira, of, you see? Yes. Mental health. This is exactly... No, this is one of the things that we keep pushing also for uh, Fatima, where we say that th sometimes there is a multiple... Uh, tax collection on, mm -hmm. on someone. Mm -hmm. I mean, last time we, we did have someone from CAC also explaining Training, how yeah. they're working on it in order to reduce, reduce. the multiple taxation. Also, the president made uh, one of his remarks uh, in his um, inaugural speech back. also, yeah. also yeah. about, you know, taxation. Tax and, yeah. You pay from here, you pay from here. We've, we've seen um, restaurants owners even uh, uh, complain Putting, about yeah. these things. Tax. Say, today, someone from AMAC will come and tell you to pay. Tomorrow, tax. someone this will person, tell yeah. you So who something. exactly are we are you paying to? to at the end of the day yeah. you're paying multiple tax and uh, um, perhaps it could just be one that will be generating revenue mm -hmm. for uh, for the country so there is that fear so this man already is only only a, a will bar what kind of frustration will make exactly. someone you know to just go and ahead and take exactly. someone's life for 15 era and he regretted it because and it then was committed. a quick action and then he committed yeah you know so that's that, that's te temper you know, and anger. Mm. That's why people need to go for anger management. Indeed, anger management. Yeah. But then, and also but the then government should imagine, find a way exactly, to keep people safe exactly. I think they should concept. incorporate that into hospitals. When people come, you try to check on their mental health, mm. ask them if they are okay, or you know, ask some questions, especially when you see someone maybe misbehaving or behaving abnormally. I think that sometimes, will help. But you do know that sometimes it's not really, it just anger management will not really be considered a mental health issue. Sometimes it's frustration. Definitely. So if you're not able to just hold yourself back, it's because becomes uh, toxic and you do something and before you know you regret it <laughs> but how aggressive must that tax collector have been towards this man for him to get so, so riled up uh, agitated you know, yeah. exactly with the economy a really really sad situation there uh, we hope that things like this you know never happens again mm. uh, already we are losing a lot of people we don't need to lose more from this kind of things so we have enough jet crashes in Port Harcourt and another uh, sad situation but we are happy that you know uh, they are all all the people there survived that crash below the headmaster we have uh, South Africa doctor Imtiaz Soleiman emerges 2023 daily trust African of the year which is really amazing mm -hmm. uh, so in the entertainment segment also we have my poor background propels my quest for success that's according to Sabinos you find this on page 12 I mean if there's one thing everyone can agree with is uh, this saying that says, um, you know, necessity is the mother of innovation. You, when, when, when you are rich, you don't start, you don't think of other things to do, but when you are poor, then definitely there's something that will push you <laughs> to say, I need to stand up and find but, a way to get myself uh, out of that trouble. So, you know, a friend actually told me that uh, she, she, she watches people making skits or doing all this comic, you know, mimics and all that. And she was saying, well, she actually thought they don't have a job, but then she understands now that they people actually have money. jobs, but then they are also carrying out those taxes to see how they can make money from other sides. Too. So, which is actually... Indeed. It, I mean, social really... media now, people are cashing out with that. So it, it's mm -hmm. good that Sabenus is telling us his story here uh, on the Daily Trust newspaper. So you can pick uh, the Daily Trust and get these stories and even more. Yeah, so these are some of the stories on, uh, these are some of the stories, of course, on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Okay, so let's quickly move to the punch uh, this morning. Uh, budget, National Assembly laments lack of details, passed bill December 19th. You can find that story on page four. Passports ready three weeks after capturing, says immigration boss. You can find that story on page 27. And uh, the writer there says, banks fear rush as CBN bars customers without BBN in April. Apex Bank uh, orders electronic re uh, revalidation of BBN in attached to accounts 
wallets in January 31st. Account holders orders fair new round of hardship and narrow scarcity. So, uh, my uh, same idea. <laughs> I'll so take my, it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why Maria came to my it, mind yeah, this morning, no, but then I think I, wish, I, should, I need to check up on her afterwards. <laughs> you can find that story on page four, but then, uh, Sumaya, what do you think? Because people are actually, you know, becoming scared uh, mm. of, you know, this revalidation of BVN and NIN, because some people actually have lost their sleeps. Yes. The printout from NIMC and what have you. Mm. So I'm wondering how they will carry on, because they are scared that Nera's casting may come up again, because some people's account may be on hold if their BVNs are not attached or their NINs are not attached. Uh, first of all, I, I think there should be a recovery process for that. I mean, you, you can go to the NIN, uh, uh, this thing, and give them your information so they would be able to print uh, another thing, another one for you. And if it comes to, uh, you know, this NIN and BVN, it's always good to save it on your phone. phone. So you can easily exactly. take uh, the picture of your Or the sleep or even the, 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 the serial number they sent to you. On your, I actually have my, my inbox. Mm -hmm. But so I can't remember really the person safe. that sent it because it's uh, in 2020, I think. Yeah. I, I I did that in Bauchi, so I can't actually remember. So but when I go and type in, it that. should come out. Exactly. There is always that. So you need to just find And then ways you to can actually also check via your bank. I think there's a code that you actually can press mm. put and then it comes up. Yes. Yes. So is. I think for everyone that has that, it will be easy for them to, you know, just access it that way. So, yeah, you can find that story on page four. You can pick the punch and then go through that. Uh, that proud, I repeated this academic feat 25 years after. CU first uh, class graduates. You can find the story on page 28. Tinubu has political will to revive Ajakuta still. DG, you can find that story on page two. I, now, I was just having that that talk. I mean, if there is one thing that I'll remember, uh, Malo Nuradin Abdullah, exactly, editor, editor of 21st uh, century, century. Chronicle, always say is that abandoned Ajakuta, Text, yes, uh, you know, uh, still. So, uh, also, I heard it on radio while coming to work. Also, people are still talking, talking about, about yeah, pushing. Uh, there are lots of things that would generate revenue at this point in the that, country that, that, that we need, and is, that we yeah. don't have enough uh, money. So, definitely. Instead of, you know, it's going good. out to uh, borrow money exactly. all the time exactly. to carry out. So it's so. a good, it's a good um, thing to hear that the president has plans for that. We can't wait. Mm -hmm. well, we hope he does better in that aspect. Indeed. Okay, you can still find that story on page two. Uh, Lim for Penny, untold uh, ordeal of casual worker who lost body parts, leaves on duty. You can find that show story on page twenty and twenty-one. Oh my God, Sumaya. I, I don't know if you can see the picture, even though it's a bit, yeah. uh, you know, blurry. But mm. that, 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 I can imagine how painful that could have it's been. It's really sad. Indeed. Uh, blessing. I'm not wayward. Blessing see you. <laughs> Dramatic <laughs> blessing see you. I, I don't know. This lady is, is, is handful. Well, she says she's not wayward. So let's read her story. Uh, yeah, yeah. so page 18, you can find that story on page 18. FG may raise workers' pension in 2024, wages, wage uh, commission. So you can find that story on 20, well, page we 26. So. We hope it's actually, because, you know, we just spoke about the living uh, hardship mm -hmm. for people earning a minimal uh, salary and what have you. I hope this works, especially for civil servants. And, and let's not forget, you know, we're talking about pensions right now. Mm -hmm. So let's not forget one of the th important things. Uh, in Nigeria, it's now customary, it's now normal, mm -hmm. you know, for children to be the retirement plan of the parents, where the parents retire and they're not getting enough from their pension and the children will now we'll have, have to, to do their own and their parents', parents. own. And it, it's not, you know, it's something that you want to do joyfully for your mm -hmm. family, but mm -hmm. then uh, it's becoming too much. So the responsibility Ability on the younger generation is becoming, becoming too, too much. much. Yes. So there is so much pressure, and then people find themselves doing the, the odd, and annoying, bad things in order to keep up with that. So yeah. If, and then I think that's course, where anger and frustration comes. Exactly. You know, and then people tend to tend to carry out some, you know, unwanted behaviors. You remember when we talked about when we did the phone conversation on pension, how people are finding it difficult to even exactly. access their to even access the normal usual their parents, yeah, work. their late parents' uh, pension and what have you. I hope this. And they should actually incorporate making it easy for people to access their, their uh, parents or their loved mm. ones' pensions after death. I mm. think that would go a long way. So you can find all that story on the Punch newspaper this morning.
All right, so let's uh, move on to the nation's uh, newspaper from the top of the page. It says CBN freezes accounts without BVN and NIN from March 2024. You find this on page three of the newspaper. Uh, five escaped death as NAF uh, helicopter cr crash lands in Patakot. The major story says tension in Kogi over gunmen's attack on Rex residents. Yes, uh, that story has been trending since yesterday. The writer says APC demands arrest of SDP candidate Ajaka over incident. Okay. Says party trying to cover haste committed in Kogi East. We are not responsible for attack. That's uh, SDP insisting. Police confirm attack on INEC officials' home. You find all the stories on page four of the nation newspaper really sad situation the aftermath is really scary uh, of uh, you know there is the pre-election crisis but which was the fear and the election crisis but then now the post uh, you know it's coming to uh, uh, be something really scary we just hope that the law enforcement the INEC and uh, Kogi governments are able to curtail this situation so uh, we have uh, Nigeria Germany sign about 12,000 megawatts of power deal uh, which is a great news for nigeria we hope that the deal pushed through in order to favor nigerians you find this on page three we have senate to federal governments block allocations to unelected local government councils the lawmakers tell earlier to restore sacked benway councils upper chamber passes 2024 appropriation bill for second reading house uh, also you find this on page five uh, the FRC finds Namasa 500 million naira over 2018 financial accounts, uh, suspends about, uh, is it JAMOS or four delays registration number? You find this on page two. Now, quickly on the Senate to so federal government block allocations to unelected local government councils. First of all, I have two things to see. I don't even know how a governor can <laughs> unseat a local councillor that was voted into. It, it doesn't was elected, even make sense. Yeah. That was elected. It doesn't even make sense. So we need to go back to our constitution and define what roles someone can do. Mm -hmm. You can only uh, uh, dismiss people that were given appointments, not people that uh, were elected by the people. Those people represent a, a part of uh, another uh, people that voted for them. But uh, apart from that also, we need to push on allocation, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, for, uh, to the state's government. Mm -hmm. One thing that we tend to focus on is the federal government. The federal government brought uh, a budget of 27 trillion naira. Uh, and when you ask yourself, so that money is not only for the federal government, there is definitely a, a budget from your state. So I will give you an assignment to you from your own state. How much did your state's governor get from that allocation? And the local government uh, councillors we're talking about that you also need to go and check. Let's keep everybody accountable uh in terms of our money because at the end of the day everybody keeps coming back to blaming the federal government and we forget the state government keeps slipping away with a lot of things that they are not doing right so let's go back to our states and then we can get more information on this now these are some of the stories on the nation newspaper this morning okay so let's take a look at guardian this morning uh pos commas plunging the will of digital transaction nationwide. Uh, Samaya, we are back to this again. So people are going to lose their monies, their little savings, because you always find scammers. And you know, you, they, pe people keep falling victims when they call them and say, oh, it's Send, so, 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 you know, pin that is sent to your phone or something. And then before you know, your money is gone. And I think, you know, this, this is all adding to, you know, people's mental stress and, you know, aggression, and frustration funny. and what have you. EFCC so, also made a call on that saying that you need to be careful going to POS or ATM. Mm -hmm. You know, when you put your card, sometimes someone might approach you to say, I want to help. And without knowing, they will switch your, your card. card. So you might now go to the bank and then before you know it, you start hearing. And I think alerts. maybe that will actually, you know, saying they want to help would go for the maybe older ones that maybe they find at the ATM trying to withdraw their cash. Mm -hmm. and so don't go alone. Go don't go alone. Exactly. So, yeah, you can find that story on, on the Guardian newspaper this morning on page 24. Uh, Valentina Uto, I am passionate about women who refuse to settle for less. Insist, in, instead, forge ahead to beat uh, to be to beat strategies okay uh, that's, can, a, that's a good thing i you, mean 
Uh, at the end of the day, people say lower your standard, but no, you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Just believe in yourself for every kind of thing that you dream there. Uh, if as long as you set a standard that you say this is what I, I want, want, then you have to also work to make yourself valuable. For to, to be worthy standard, of that exactly. standard that you've set for yourself. So you can find that story on page 15 of The Guardian. Uh, the writer there says, the 2024 budget concerns a sustainable dumps manifesto allocates 12.8% to social sector. You can find that story on page two. So Maya, what do you think about this? You know, because, you know, the manifesto actually tells us what they intend to do when they come to, you know, the uh, office, when they resume their duties as elected. Uh, one, you know. thing, one thing I would say on this is that if there is one thing that is clear to everyone is that when you are not on the seat, you it may looks know. different. So yes. you're looking at, a, at the whole thing from a different, different angle. But then when you now sit on that throne, then you start seeing the things as they are. Mm -hmm. So that is what is happening to the president. So of there Nigeria. are certain things that right you can't now, it's just you can't overlook and you can't exactly. dump. So exactly. but then I feel it's social sector, you know, it captures uh, the entertainment world as well because when you say social it brings in everything. And you know, the, the entertainment... There's also amenities and all that. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see how this is going on. If there is one thing that, you know, we can give kudos to Mr. President is that he listen. So he does. There must be something he that does. he must have seen in order to make uh, that uh, allocation. That allocation, yeah. So you can find that story on page two of The Guardian. You can pick it up this morning. With, uh, with, um, with hold allocation to local councils without elected officials, Senate orders Tinubu. You can find that story on page three. CBN to freeze accounts without BVN NIN, April 2024. So if you haven't uh, done your NIN or you've lost it, please, we urge you to go and do that so that you will be able to access your cash when that is done. Because if your accounts are frozen, you wouldn't, you would, you wouldn't have access to your, your money. And so, you know, life is going to be a bit hard. <laughs> Definitely. So please. You can find that story on page 29, so you can find more uh, in information on that. Um, criminality is messing up Biafra struggles. Uh, IPUB chieftain laments. You can find that story on page 3. Police hunts, police hunts for attackers of Kogi Rex residents. APC, SDP trade blames. You can find that story on page 2 of the Guardian newspaper. And I think that's it. Uh, that's all we can uh, take. This morning, Sumaya? Indeed. All right. So there is one thing that I always love. You, you know, always do. Exactly. Yeah, the numbers. The numbers <laughs> on the Daily Trust news Yeah, so uh, let's so hear quickly, it. quickly, uh, we have about uh, young men and women mm -hmm. uh, were on Sunday given marriage counseling in Kano. And guess how many the numbers? About 1,000. That's cool. Which is a great, uh, you That's know, cool. move. Because one thing that we all know is that when it comes to, especially the northern Nigeria, the only thing we do is just... Uh, you know, very not very like mm -hmm. you just mm -hmm. <laughs> listen to do your this and don't and, do that and then for the man they will tell you people be patient that's just it yeah. so getting marriage counseling ideas is something uh, or, uh you know it's something that we welcome now in the northern part of nigeria and also nigeria in general a lot of marriages are, are, are you know are going down we're getting a lot of divorce crisis so hearing that now there is that push on counseling uh in nigeria is something that we're really grateful for marriage is supposed to be amazing okay so have faith and let's learn more about it's it it's supposed to be happy enter. ending exactly <laughs> it's not a fairy tale joke because yeah, of... but it's supposed to be happy i do indeed all right so another number we have amounts in nara new loan that president bola metunubu sought to senate approval to borrow for critical projects in different sectors it's about 71 trillion nara mm. That's a huge number. It is. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's about using that money to do a project that would yield more mm -hmm. money so that we can be able to pay back and then it will help the economy to grow. So, yeah, for now, the number is scary, <laughs> but, but then that we're able to pay back. Yeah. <laughs> so another number, we have 11 loggers beheaded by suspected Boko Haram in Sodent near Bali in Damboa local government of uh, Borno State, which is a really sad one, sad. Uh, you know, being beheaded, beheaded for something you know trivial because even seeing even, you know the, the just the acting in a movie it's it's exactly it's, exactly it's really you know, a sad situation yeah. and we hope that 
the number stops there. You know, we, uh, we hope uh, this, uh, the security agents are able to hold these people accountable. And we have another number of 150 number of inmates with options of fines that the federal government released in Kano to decongest the custodial centers. So that is also a great thing. Sometimes you realize that the people just did something really trivial. It's just a fine that they're supposed to pay. But they don't even have the, uh, the money for that. So the federal government are uh, doing that and other stakeholders, NGOs, you know, putting together money to help these people out is something that is really great. Well, anyways, yeah, these are, are the uh, front pages uh, that we could, that they were able to bring to you this morning. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, it's that fun time of hearing from you guys about a societal issue that we need to find solution for. So stay with us. We started manufacturing leather since 1958. But the most important thing is that if the system is checked correctly, we won't, we won't have where we are now. If somebody has depression, they may just be very irritable and unproductive in the office. So you find on average already about one in four, one in five Nigerians already have a mental illness, a mental health condition that needs some form of attention. Uh, no matter how good an economy is, if the federal government goes past, believe me, everything in that economy is just a matter of time, it will go past. Uh, so first of all, about uh, maybe slightly above, below 70% is in federal government securities. If government has uh, banned importation of fertilizer and states are doing it at the level of governors, but I believe that production and distribution of fertilizer should be left to the private sector. Uh, this is the general multipurpose card and it has a chip here. So this chip is about 80 kilobytes. The one that you get from the bank for ATM is just 4 kilobytes. So this is like 20, 20 times. Welcome back to Daybreak Extra on Trust Television. And right now, in commemoration uh, with the end of violence against women and children that has been going on, you know, the celebration, and it takes about 16 days to celebrate these things. So we are still talking about it, even though we spoke about it yesterday. But today we want to hear from communities because one of the things that we, we will definitely attest to is the fact that the numbers keep increasing on violence on women, girl, child. You know, there is always that fear. So uh, International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women is something we'll be talking about today. Saturday, 25th, November 2023 marks the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against uh, Women and Girl Child and the start of 16 days of activism as against the gender-based violence. Now, this moment provides an opportunity to reflect on the progress made in tackling the global search of violence against women and girls in all its forms, as well as a call to action to redouble international efforts to eradicate such crimes. As one of the most prevalent and pervasive human rights violations, the gender-based violence encompasses physical, sexual, or psychological harm or suffering, and can often have a live, long impact on the survivors we're talking about situations where women are hurt and at the end of the day, these are women that are supposed to be the nurturers, people that will train other generations. So when you leave a woman traumatized, then definitely that woman would uh, actually bring that trauma and transfer it to the other generations, which is like you ruining an entire lineage. So uh, these are things that we need to talk about. We are not taking it seriously enough, even though 2023 has shown that effort that okay this is something that uh even now the major stakeholders the government the security agents are, are trying to take it better but now there is that grace that the society is giving these perpetrators people do things and they'll tell you no you, it's okay it's not that deep but then someone's life has been ruined so that is what we'll be talking about let's not forget uh 25th november to about 
10 of December, which is uh, the Human Rights Day. So 16 days to celebrate, uh, to commemorate with women, to say that we, are put, we want to put an end to women, uh, to the violence on uh, women. So these are things that, of course, we would be opening the phone line to hear from you. Uh, Fatima, this is so emotional for me. I really get emotional when I see these things to a point that even when I am watching, you know, movies and it comes with that kind of scene of violence on, on women or girl child, I tend to get triggered and, and tell myself there is somebody experiencing this exact thing at mm -hmm. the moment. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm watching it in a movie, I don't get carried away to say, no, it's just a movie. Mm -hmm. So it's something that is really traumatizing. Because, you know, there are things that are not fictional. You know, it, you can't you can't just create that that uh, image mm. that it's not happening, or you just sat down and say, "Oh, let me create a scene where a woman is being beaten, or is being abused, or a child is being beaten, or is being abused." It, it's it's a it's reality. It's someone's reality, and you know, it's the stories around people that we we live with mm. that we tend to show in our movies to educate people that okay, this is this is. It has to stop. It's a no-no. You can't just, you know, keep raising your hands on kids or, you know, women because they are the vulnerable ones. You know, and let's not forget that even men too tend to get abused too, but it, it's not as much as women being abused, mm. right? So it's really emotional for every woman when this particular kind of thing happens or it comes up. It's something that we find difficult, you know, to come to terms with because one way or the other, you might have been abused. It doesn't have to be yeah, physical, you know, maybe even with it. words. You can be abused with words, you know. Mm. So it, it, almost everybody has, has gone through that. So we would really love to hear from you. Yes, uh, of course. So to join the conversation, you can uh, call the number on your screen here uh, so that we can hear from you. How are we going to tackle this particular situation? What are we doing wrong as society in producing people with that kind of mindset that feel they need to harm other people, especially the weak agenda. We're talking about the women and weak are not in terms of mindsets, but in terms of strength. So that you can't join the, uh, the strength of a man and a woman. So uh, how did we go wrong in raising this kind of people? How did we go wrong in raising women to even tolerate that to some extent? How do we go wrong in pushing the narrative that if a family member should, you know, rape or harm uh, a, a family member, then... The, Part of the family members will be the one even pushing for who oh, lets the world not hear of it because the, our family would, you know, be seen as cursed or something. How are we covering for these perpetrators for this long? What are we doing wrong? So please go ahead, call the number on your screen and talk to us. Let's also find the solution together because we need to stop this. Every day, the numbers of uh, gender-based violence keep increasing in our society and it's alarming and scary so we would want to hear from you on how to find the possible solutions if you have experienced something like that what do you think we need to do uh, in order to you know get rid of that particular situation uh, uh, and also you can send us a, a number via whatsapp uh, make sure that you include your name and location, yeah. you know, uh, in order to hear where we're uh, hearing from you from. And please, if you're calling, do stay away from your TV set or tone down the volume. That way we can hear, uh, uh, you know, from you um, constructively. We need to find solution for this. It is really scary. Yes. Uh, I think before we start picking calls or messages, let's take a look at our guest that came by yesterday, who is actually a victim and a healing coach mm -hmm. and an advocate for, you know, uh, people, victims that have been abused. Let's take a look at, uh, you know, a recap of what she has said on our show yesterday morning. So the Orange the World, um, you know, concept, the concept to end violence against women and girls, every year we come up with a theme. And so this year's theme is Unite, Invest to Prevent um, Violence Against Women and Girls. And that's just basically, you know, more of collaboration of uh, victim advocates, gender responders, policy makers, governments, NGOs, CSOs coming together to raise just one voice to end gender-based violence. Because, you know, like you said, the statistics are rising mm -hmm. despite the efforts, you know, that are being put in either by individuals or organizations. But again, we see that there is, you know, a voice in our unity. There is strength when we come together and you know you said um, it's largely celebrated but you know we, we i even feel that we're not even doing it enough mm -hmm. you know because 
every day when you go to the police stations, when you go to the law enforcement, in our offices, you know, as um, gender respondents, we get daily reports and it keeps increasing. So sometimes even the statistics are what is reported. Remember, we still have areas where they're underreported. But, you know, one of the things that this united front is doing for us is the fact that, you know, is exposing us to areas where people can now gain access to, you know, just like the SAC centers, for instance, 41 is nothing near the numbers that we're, you know, clamoring for. But in this unity, our voice is becoming strengthened, our voice is becoming one. And this year's theme, even in the FCT, you know, has gone far with mm. that theme. So the culture of silence is like an age-long culture. I was a victim of sexual abuse and I was silenced for over 23 years. And by the time I broke my silence, it was a shock to even people that were closest to me because they didn't understand that I went through that and I was quiet. But I was threatened to silence and I lost my voice. When I found my voice, I knew that it wasn't just about telling my story, it was also becoming a voice to other people. And that is why you see us celebrate cases when we see a conviction, like the Dr. Lalea's case, for instance, that the woman, you know, the wife who caught him stood up for her niece, uh, you know, and fought it till the end and she's still currently being stigmatized not even the victim now the person who reported so we still have that cloud of ignorance that's i think that's what i'll call it of people thinking oh is it a big deal is it a family matter can we settle this but do not forget that like you said this causes trauma deep-seated trauma this causes depression and has led to suicide in some cases so the culture of silence what we do in our spaces as gender responders is to keep creating awareness and is to keep telling them the damage that your silence would cause. I always tell people that keeping silence even causes more damage, you know, to the to the victim. So the culture of silence is age long. It's it's, it's been there for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And gradually people are coming out of their shell. And that's why I advocate for shelters. Because sometimes when you tell someone to break Okay, so that was uh, Dr. Um, Barista Oluwa Tony uh, for uh, Falei. She came around yesterday, and she's an advocate. So, Maya, you 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 can remember what all the things she Indeed. said yesterday. I could see how emotional, and you're still emotional Indeed. even now because you know when when we discuss topics like this, it's not just you; it's everywhere, you mm. know. So we can we can't wait to hear from you, uh, our viewers. Uh, send us your WhatsApp messages and call us to join this conversation. Uh, Tumaya, let's talk about the silent uh, culture. You I mean, know, that, you, that, you that heard what she thing. said. Mm, that is the thing that w we keep pushing. Uh, she's, she even told us a story of a woman who has her husband was constantly abusing his own child, not a, step a stepdaughter, his own daughter. And then when this girl got tired of this situation, she approached uh, uh, the, 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 the coach, you know, she okay, approached the coach, the coach uh, and their team to complain about this. And they went to the police station trying to push on this uh, thing to, in order to prosecute the father. And the mother was, was the one begging, she was crying, begging, for them not to prosecute the father and and the, the question the coach asked was you are the mother of this girl and your daughter Why is would being you abused feel okay like what happened i thought i thought there was that love of spouse but there is love for a child, child. i mean this person is enjoying himself mm -hmm. so that makes him a selfish person meanwhile this girl her life is ruined. Do you know how she, 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 she will never be someone that can easily say, I had the love of a father. And she's someone that she's supposed to get married and trust men. When she had the first role model in her life that she's supposed to love more than anybody, her father, is a monster. So at the end of the day, this girl even had to go back because there was no, there is no camp, you know, uh, uh, for for victims like this uh, by the federal government or even the uh, non-governmental uh, 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 agencies that are already helping this particular situation. The camps are not much, so there was no space to even give the girl that she would stay away from these toxic people that she called or that are called her parents. So I, this lady now has to go through the same thing again because she is going back to her father's house because there is no family member that wants to take her in. Now she is becoming the bad person. The family are now looking at her as though she's the one that wants to ruin their family name. Why wouldn't she continue taking it in silence? Does that even make sense? What is wrong in our society right now that... If a person is being raped, sexually harassed, even in the workplace, people push her to quiet. 
you're supposed to keep quiet about it. Why would you want to stain someone's name? So when we don't hold these people accountable, they keep doing this thing over and over again, thinking that it is right. And they have people that support them. Now, I feel like even in, the, uh, in, in our constitution, it should be that the people that are supporting, people that are uh, enabling this thing that is happening should also get a sentence. They should you know, pay for you that. know, she made mention of uh, something very important yesterday when she said the perpetrators are hiding. They, when when you when you arrest these people, you know, committing all these uh, crimes, their faces are covered. Why are you hiding their faces? You That's always, a question I've always asked exactly. myself as well. You know, it's not just about when maybe you you, you arrest a rob uh, arm robber or you arrest a, a, fr a fraudster or something. You, Imagine when a hush puppy was arrested because he's a he's a first star. His face was showing. They didn't hide his face. So why is it that when uh, people that rape or you know molest or abuse women or ch a girl child, their faces are being covered, or you see them turning their backs to carry out interviews? Let us see their faces so we know who they are. So people will be you know cautious of people like that living in their communities or societies. And it and will scare the perpetrator. It will scare exactly. next people having that mindset. That their faces are showing, so that that way they would be able to, you know... A, a typical example, Fatima, is is uh, what is happening with uh, Nicki Minaj's husband, you know, the rapper. Yeah. Her husband was registered a sex offender. He, he uh, There was an accused, even though mm -hmm. uh, the, he's still denying mm -hmm. the non-guilty thing. But then the, uh, the victim was able to prove it. And he acted this while he was 16 years old. He was still a minor. Mm -hmm. And even at that, he was still registered. And as a, a sex sexual offender. offender so wherever the, the rules is that even if he should travel say interstates in and let's use nigeria as an example if he should travel from, from natural state and tell mm -hmm. the and say I'm, I'm relocating there to for, to abuja then when you come to the fct you're supposed to go to the uh a sexual offenders office to register that you are a sexual offender. That way, you're war the, the, they are warning people in that community that you just arrived and they need to be careful with you. Mm -hmm. So this is something that would bring shame to the people doing this and will not push them. But when you see uh, the, uh, the security agent get these people, then they quickly cover their faces or you see bloggers posting it on social media and they're blocking the, this perpetrator's face. Why? You did something horrible. People need to see your face so that people would uh, be able to, you know, protect their child. There was also another sad situation of a, a, a displaced person who didn't have a house, came to a community, people helped him. And he started, uh, you know, uh, raping uh, a mentally underaged person. Yes, a girl. Which is another scary thing. How how do you even think about this this thing? Mm -hmm. how, how can, how 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 cautious can parents get no matter what we cannot say parents are not trying parents are trying to make sure their, 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 their girl child is safe parents are trying to make sure their young boys are safe but how cautious can one get that at the end of the day you're not blaming the parents for not doing enough to protect their child from the perpetrators how 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 crazy has the country been our mentality our thoughts that people are now hiding uh, at the fact that someone is raped and they're telling the person don't say it because if you say it, nobody would marry okay, you we have a call why now? Why is that? All right, so uh, we have our first caller this morning. Good morning. We lost the call. All right, we lost that caller. Please go ahead, call us uh, via the number on your uh, screen and also send in your messages. I'm sure that uh, you have a lot to say on this act. Uh, uh, we need to talk about what these victims are going through. We need to talk about the damage this can be on, on a girl child uh, in general and how this would affect a, a society when this uh, act keeps being ignored. So I would like to hear you from know, you. You know, if you course. remember a couple of days ago in one of the front pages of the newspaper, I think, uh, when they said uh, uh, abusers are going to be jailed for seven years. Uh, so uh, sexual abusers in universities, you know, uh, workplaces, I think, it shouldn't be left out because mm -hmm. anywhere a woman is, is being abused one way or the other. And then, you know, somewhere like you said, it's going to lead to, you know, damage, uh, a lot of damages and then it's going to lead to suicide. Hmm. You know, and this is the, these are the kind of things that triggers people or women to actually do a certain or, you know, behave in a certain way that they may come back and regret later. So, yeah, I think we need to put an end to this. This affects everybody because it's all over the world. Anywhere there's a woman, uh, she's been abused. Hmm. And like I said earlier, it's not just women. Even men, too, are being abused, but it's not as much as women. 
So, because we are the vulnerable ones. There was this uh, story also about a man seeking divorce, I think, in, in Badon. And, and one of the things he told the judge was that his wife beat him and humiliates him. So, it, it's not all uh, about, um, you know, uh, a girl child and all that. But then we're talking, emphasizing on Gacha because this is the time for violence against the women but things like this are happening and whether we like it or not uh you cannot hurt people just because of your own selfish reason and yeah, i was that telling is yesterday that someone uh you remember i saw a post on uh, in one of the social media handles where a man said his wife is slapping and beating him so he's, he's he doesn't know what to do he came out to cry on social media mm. what can the people on social media do to help you at this point you are the man if you feel you can't you know take uh, what she's doing any longer you got married to her you're the head of the family you can let her go you know <laughs> sit down and just have a conversation i feel we're toxic for each other less part ways instead of you know coming out on social media and putting your private life out there uh, see, for okay. people to advise what? and uh, was... someone <laughs> called me yesterday so Maya, i wanted to say this you know even though it sounds funny yeah. that she's going to beat someone i was like who are you going to beat <laughs> she's going to beat a, a man actually and it was so funny <laughs> because at this point that we are celebrating uh, violence against women and a no, woman is saying she wants to beat her mind. It was so funny, like, you know. Uh, see, one thing that I feel like we keep going back and forth on is talking about people coming out on social media to talk. If people don't talk, we say they don't talk. And sometimes people do not have the avenue. We're talking about how uh, counselors or therapists these days are quite expensive. So when someone does not have somebody to talk to and you meet family members and family members are quick to tell you, no, just be patient. That's the least a family member can tell mm -hmm. you. So mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like I understand why some people put their things on social media because we're talking about mental health. A lot of things is going on for the longest time in someone's head and if that person doesn't have the avenue to you know talk it out then the person starts getting really mentally unstable mm -hmm. so sometimes people are pushed when they try okay i talked to this girl's family or this woman's family example of the story that you just said now and her family are saying oh be patient or something they talk to her and she's not really listening i talk to my family they tell me be patient with her i mean you're the man you know situations like that so he can't even go to his friends to say it so let me just leave an anonymous you know tip out there you know, and hear I, what social media would say. And yeah. sometimes he might get a solution from that. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, actually, people will advise you on what they have done or what they think you should do to get out of that situation. You know, the, I guess yesterday, you know, being a victim who uh, has always come out to, you know, speak about her own situation, even though she was silenced for 25 years by yeah. her family. Yeah. You know, your family are supposed to be the backbone. They're supposed to be the ones supporting, you know, just like the case of the woman that, you know, you just mentioned that when her husband was the one that that you know that assaulted their daughter and they were trying to find justice for her and he she's crying and saying no don't take my husband and all i think that uh, uh, your family needs to support when when girls come to you and they cry out it, like the man this lagos doctor that she mentioned mm. imagine his wife is the one that stood up for her niece indeed indeed and you know the story went viral because uh, to an extent i think i followed up you can see videos of him you know even assaulting his own patients that come to the hospital to seek his own advice as a professional you know because their their, their health is involved and what have you and you're taking advantage of them there are so many of them out there and and the most saddest part is that people were now blaming the wife that people were calling the wife telling her that why would you even Go Expose against. your husband like that. I mean, he's your husband. You should go back home and fix it quietly. So you're supposed to go back when you know that your husband is a monster. To go back with him and continue lovey-dovey with him. How does that make sense? F uh, Fatima, I, I would say one thing, which I have seen for a fact that it is, a, is it sh for sure. We as a society in Nigeria, we are enabling these people. We are making these people go scot-free. You're putting, you're covering the face of someone who raped a six-year-old girl. You are, you are covering the secrets of someone who raped your neighbor or even your child because you don't want the world to see this girl and say, no, they will not marry her because of your reputation. Don't think it's because of the girl. Because if you want it because of the girl, you need to get justice for her. And justice would be the perpetrator being held accountable for what he did. Justice would be for you to take her to therapy and for her to speak out, out, out about what she's feeling. 
Justice would be for you to tell the society what your child has gone through so that they will be able to help her grow out of that because you someone wronged you and you had been told to keep quiet while that person is roaming around the street you know living his best life that is the most ridiculous thing i see happening and you know, in our society know, Sumaya, it's really it's really sad now that you're talking about all this you know some memories okay we have a caller hello good morning, good morning. Good morning, how are you? <coughs> Fine, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Your name and location, please. Thank you very much for having me on the program this splendid morning of today. Mohamed Modibo calling from uh, Kondi State. Oh, thank you, Mohamed Thank Mohammed you for joining us. Go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, this, is an, this, is an, this is an important day. The day that should be celebrated by all our Sundays. Hmm. So by the we want a sane and healthy society. We have to ensure that uh, violence against women is stopped in our society. It is when uh, women are treated uh, the way they're supposed to be treated in the right manner that we are going to have a sane and clean society. A society where the do's and don'ts of the society will be upheld by uh, the, the inhabitants of the society. But when we allow a violence against women to be on the increase in our society, our society is going to be destroyed completely. So this habit of violence against women should be discarded and jettisoned in whatever form. And those who are caught in the act they should be punished. The problem is, uh, as Maya have said it, we have, a, we have a system that condone impunity. The law-abiding people must always see the law violators being punished. Mm. If the law violators are not being punished, even after checking to the appropriate authorities, it is not going to serve as a deterrent to others. Others will definitely go into it. And we also have to change our mindset. You know, the problem you are talking about this issue of rape and how people try to conceal it, mm. how people try to settle it at the word head uh, 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 compound or at the comfort zone of the word head and what have you. Mm. We also have to encourage uh, and continue to sensitize our own people to know the dangers associated with this rape, a rapist, and to continue to expose them wherever they are. And we have to ensure that we join hands. This problem must be tackled when all hands are on deck. We have to do all what we could within our capacity to ensure that our society is being sanitized. If the society is sanitized, Definitely, all things are going to move smoothly. Things are going to fall in place the way they are supposed to be, and we are all we are all we are going to enjoy the society. But when we allow things to go astray, it is all of us that are going to be consumed by our inaction and our lackadaisical attitude. Mm. We shouldn't be blaming others for our woes because we are the architect of our own problem. Thank you very much Thank for this you. wonderful opportunity. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so, so much, much uh, Modibo. Modibo, at, at this point, I feel like you should join us on the show because uh, the, the ending that he said, he said at the end of the day, we are the ones, ones. to blame. It's, yeah. it's our own like a death take attitude. So I, I love that. I mean, at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, it's us that is making this thing continue to happen. I, I made this example yesterday and I will still bring it today. In, in the Asian country, example, let's narrow it down to South uh, Korea. If you should as, as, ex, as easy as touch a woman without. Whom, without her permission, even if you're her friend, then she can scream out and then the law enforcement would hold you for harassment because you're not allowed to even touch a woman. I mean, we saw a situation on social media where uh, a fan came to hold uh, uh, this uh, BB Niger, ex BB Niger housemate stature and he just asked for a picture so she, she granted him the wish and then he immediately carried his hand uh, around behind her waist and she felt uncomfortable so she was immediately removing it and people 
Nigerians were coming out to say that uh, it, she's she doing mean. it because he's poor. Like, what kind of mindset is that? Where in the she world is it okay for a man to touch a woman without asking her for permission? It doesn't even make sense. So when you see these people doing this, and, and, and then it, it, it's turned on the victim. They start you making the victim to look like the bad person. You know, a victim gets raped, and then you first ask the victim, why did you wear this? Okay, why we did you wear this? A really sad situation. All right, we have another caller. Good morning. Can I contribute to the program? Yes, yes please. please. Your name and location, please. Um, Pastor Mishita John from Delta, Papele. Okay. okay. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you for us. joining us from Sapele. Go ahead with your thoughts. Um, what I have to say, yes, what I have to say was, um, I suffered, I, first of all, I commend you people for all what you are doing. Thank you. May God Almighty bless you people and reward you very much. Thank you. And may your children never had any cause to suffer from this sort of thing. Amen to that. And um, during the time I was growing up, my mom was a student mistress. Hmm. She had almost about five assistants that were living with us. Hmm. At the tender age when I was growing up, at the age of about three, four, I was being molested in the bedroom by each one of them. That's After so my mom might have left to the shop. Hmm. So when you people are saying violence against women, you must also say violence against men and boys' child. Mm, of course. And um, now that I'm a priest, a lot of these religious houses mm. cover up things, especially when they are being given money by the husband. They now look at these women, most of these people that are being molested by their husband, if I would say, as being troublesome. Mm. Look at the case of this woman that died, Osinachi. Mm. Mm. Before the case was blown to the limelight, she'd been suffering on the ground. And each time they go to the religious, to the pastor, the pastor will say, ah, save your marriage, save your marriage. So let's keep on hammering so that people will speak up. Just like the last caller said, one day, one day, we'll be free. Then once again, one of your guests, I mean, one of your presenters there was saying that it is better for them to show the face of these people. Hmm. So that we serve as a deterrent. If they can show the face of these people that are doing uh, 419 and these other, other criminals, why can't they show the face of these sexual harassment exactly. people? Exactly. So that at least when they are, when they are said that they show, people will identify them in the neighborhood and say, ah, you, you saw your face also. So, so they will learn to be to detached from it. Yeah. So I know one day, one day, justice will be done. Yes. Because really, we can't rely much, 100% on our mm -hmm. legal system. Yeah. You go there, once you have one, the other one that committed the crime has money to shoot out, the case will be overturned. I know God will fight for us. Mm. God will fight for us. God will fight the cause of the just. Thank you very much for what you're doing. Thank, Thank you, you so much. God bless much. you. Oh my God, uh, Charles, uh, Charles, I've been trying to hold myself. And right now you're getting me more emotional, but uh, I hope that you heal from whatever you know, happened to you. That was a really sad uh, situation. Uh, you know, you know somewhere I mentioned, you. you know, that even men are being abused. Yes. It's not as much as women. You know, I mentioned it earlier. So we know that men are also being abused. And that's why we made some statements of, you know, some men that you just made mention exactly. of and I also made mention of. So definitely, uh, even the lawyer yesterday made mention of, you know, boys that are being um been molested yes and one it's, it's sad it's hard to even say it that is you know really so, sad. Yeah. And, and we're talking about uh, what domestic violence where we also you know made mention of mm. uh women hitting their men men hitting their women sometimes it reached to that stage where there will be loss of life which is really unnecessary and we still come back again to the society i mean we we've heard situations where people go to the police station and a wife would complain that my husband beats me and the police will say but he's your husband i'll go back and, and fix the marriage First well, of all, say this is a husband and wife matter, matter. Exactly. First of all, when it comes to hitting someone, even if you're married to a person and and you're about to go have sexual uh, relations with her, and she tells you no, that is rape. You're raping your wife. Mm -hmm. I know Africans don't have that mentality, but it is rape when someone does not like it because religiously. The, both parties need to be 
in consent even if you're married that's how it is so <laughs> go back uh, and pick your holy book and read more in order to understand these things i mean it keeps getting worse where uh, society will tell you no it is okay to stay in that marriage because you've been beaten it's just beaten it, it until doesn't the make day sense. you come and pick their dead bodies and so, exactly. you know, that's what i'm saying that per you family only, are supposed to be the support you can system. only fight um, you can only work okay, on we'll marriage have you can only work on marriage when there is no beating you know that violence in yeah. it okay so we have another caller good morning good morning are you with us okay, okay. We'll please call. do uh, uh go ahead or call uh, and, and send us messages uh in order to uh, tell us your thoughts on this matter really sad situation so it it, it goes beyond uh you know uh, marriage and say no it's okay for us to do this thing so it goes beyond family and say no it's because your family you can mm. do a heinous crime and get away with it uh, we need to s remove that mentality you know i actually uh, from, wanted to uh, 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 make mention of one um, um from uh, Madia's program uh, law and order back then where i followed her to one uh, community you know at the suburbs where a woman and her daughter are hiding from uh, a, a son of uh, the king of that, the, their community raped her daughter and they went to the police station. Sumaya, the sad thing is she, the mother was also raped by the policemen at the police station where she went to report the case. The story is still there. It's, you can check it out on YouTube because it's part of uh, Madia's uh, program. And it's really sad, you know, because you find people, even the lawyer that came yesterday, don't forget, I made mention that she was silenced for 25 years by her own family. You don't know the trauma she had to go through, the sleepless nights that she had to go through, you know, you just remembering the, those moments. Only God knows what, mm. you know, the soul cannot take at that time. But then you have to. And then, and then imagine the, the victim seeing the perpetrator every day. If, if my, as in for that 22 years imagine 25 you looking, years. Oh, 25 years looking at that all right okay, so we, we have, have another, another caller good morning okay yes your name and location please okay uh, my name is uh Elijah Olol from Richmond here in Katsina okay. okay thank you thank for joining you. us from Katsina go ahead thank you you see I <clears throat> I've been watching a uh, program especially this one you are doing now Mm. And it's a very interesting uh, program. On the speaker, as you are talking about violence against uh, the women. Mm. Yeah, I have two things to say. Just like somebody said before me, uh, as for the for long you have been talking about violence against women, but there are violence against men, most especially by by women. Mm. So at least uh, you should have time also to talk on violence against men, so that this thing will be. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uniformity. Of course. Hello? Yes, we can no, hear you. Can hear you. And then the second thing, the, the second thing I want to say is that uh, when you talk of violence against women, mm. I thought you would be discussing on the causes, the reasons why there's this uh, violence against women. Mm. You know, there are so many causes, disobedience and many other things. So at least you should be talking about reasons. Because when somebody sees it, you will even think that only men are beating or hanging uh, women. But we have to look at the reasons why these things are happening. You have to uh, face the reality. Hmm. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, that's what I want to at least add in your own presentation. Okay. When you are discussing this, at least you should be mentioning reasons why this thing is happening. Hmm. And then lastly, I want to uh, buy your idea where you can say that most of these people that uh, are causing this violence against women, at times they, 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 they were said to be if they were offended. So okay. at least if such people are being uh, punished, at mm. least this uh, problem will uh, be minimized. But where somebody will commit an offense, when he is taken maybe to law enforcement uh, agents, generally you see that after a day or two, you will see him uh, on the street again. So we must at least punish this type of people that are doing this, whether they are women or men. Mm. Hello? 
All right. Yes. All right. Yeah, thank you so much uh, uh, for uh, that. I mean, he, he gave a lot of things. And one of the things that uh, you mentioned about uh, also lining out why these things are happening. I mean, in some of the discussions that we had, we actually dropped a bit of two of how these things are happening. And one of them that I specifically said is that uh, while growing up, you know, people are seen differently. Uh, there are things that people do that we just ignore. And I will never forget uh, while growing up, there's always that mentality. And we still carry it, especially in the northern part of Nigeria, where they would say something like, um, uh, a bad thing is, is qualia for a man. You know, a, a man can be uh, wrong. A man can do bad things. But then uh, it's still okay. He's a man, so it's nothing. So but man, then a not woman can do a little and then it's the, a big... the society chastises her. So it, it, that is why even though there is violence against men, mm -hmm. the, what, the ratio uh, of is, women. is really different when it comes to women because the society would quickly blame a woman uh, even you are being raped and you are the one that is still blame on why you dressed like this why you went to this place why did you smile like this maybe that was why the person so the society is always trying to protect the man and give reason why the man might, might have done that and there's somebody who be like no he was not in his right frame of mind that was why he did this so things like this is what is happening so and it you know, boils down to parents yeah. taking care of the children making sure that while you're you're trying to you know balance uh, you should try to balance how you treat your child whether a boy or a girl and you you need to show your children how to respect people's opinion i mean when you go on social media you see how people talk and think these days you start getting scared why must i think exactly like you think so you need to you need to know boundaries you need and, to teach your so children Maya, you boundaries. know yesterday from the the introduction to our program yesterday mm. you know we made mention of 14 percent of ni women in nigeria alone are being molested or abused or you know physically uh, uh abused and the 14 percent is uh, out of the 250 million nigerian uh, nigerians uh, it's like 35 percent or let's say 35 million women mm. in nigeria are being abused in one way or the other like we said even with words you know like words carry weight too you know like you can actually abuse someone by their looks and it can actually stress them mentally and stuff so that's the, because it's categorized into four, right? Mm. Uh, women are being abused uh, physically, sexually, uh, economically, you know, mm. and psychologically. Mm. So it, psychologically in the sense that if I see you dressing in a certain way and I say, why are you dressed this way? Why are you so fat? Why are you so ugly? That's an abuse. It doesn't really have to be physical, you know, like punching and, you know, stuff like that. Indeed. And uh, like I, you I rightly mean, mentioned, we mentioned that men are also being abused. It's like they don't even... No, we, no. We, they, we they, try to balance, but exactly. then... They don't... Just, I, and I, I understand where they're coming from. I mm. mean, they feel like we keep... They are left the out. And why we are doing that is because this is... Uh, the 16 days that is in commemoration is to, uh, you know, uh, end violence against women. And that is what we're talking about this. I mean, when something about men comes up of definitely. course we push uh, society needs to be healthy one of the things that i would definitely push is one of the reasons that this thing is growing is like we said parents parents need to do better parents keep uh, telling their girl child that you can you can do this but then they tell the boy child and if even if you should do this it's okay you can get away with it so society is grooming people uh to tell them that it is okay to do a lot of things and just because you're a man then you can get away with it and you know and, we, are, and we, are, is that, we are being confused you know growing up they'll say oh anything a man does is fashion right exactly. but then anything a woman does um is 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 against the the, the law is against exactly. it and, and also uh, uh, Fatima. Fatima. <laughs> again they said anything a man does is fashion <laughs> so, it's, so it's contradictory uh, and also uh fatima there is that thing that we do that uh also um puts that mindset on a child you know a, a boy grows up seeing his father hit his mom all the constantly. time constantly constantly or a, a girl grows up seeing her mother hitting her father 
constantly or abusing or you abusing, verbally yes, all verbally the time. you know physically uh, emotionally things like that so when a son grows up and see a woman treating his father bad then he start thinking okay i need to pay back what uh, my mom did to my father and they'll start also being uh, hurtful to other women uh, or if a man grows up to see his role model his father hitting his mom then he'll be like then it's fine i can hit other I women as well after all my dad did it yeah. so they will use violence they feel that they become so used to it that they feel using violence or hitting is the only exactly. way to correct a mistake exactly. done exactly yeah and, so. and also there is that part of where if a girl child now grows up uh, seeing her mother being beaten and she's taking it so she has that mentality of okay even I if he's beating it me i should take it right yeah. and that decision usually ends someone in the grave which is something that we're trying to eradicate this is beyond heinous this is bad we need to change that narrative we need to put a stop on it and like a uh, module the first caller said he said that at the end of the day it's still us that would fight it and you know when you're doing something wrong you know that when, when, when right now the media we're always pushing ourselves to say that we need to show the face of these perpetrators and it's something that we're, we're already working on it shouldn't be hidden i mean when it comes to human rights you don't have the right to to abuse someone physically mentally emotionally and then at the end of the day you now come and say you have rights to cover your face no that doesn't work yet <laughs> there should also be sexual offenders register where these things will be registered uh, that way they would be hold accountable to these particular situations and yes at the end of the day we have to leave you with parents need to be extra careful also with taking care of their children keep an eye on your child they are so vulnerable the boy and the girl i mean there was one story that happened uh, in Bauchi where uh, uh four men lured a four-year-old boy to to a nearby mox you know to, to yes continuously uh, you know a, a very disgusting graphic and and these people were, were caught but we never uh, had the end of the story so it still boils down to us as a society pushing making sure that we see these things to the end in order to uh, have these perpetrators pay uh, their dues but anyways yeah this is the much that we can take on this issue if, if we decide to take this we can drag it for the whole day but then we know what to do let's find possible solutions for this uh heinous crimes that is happening in our society oh we have a last okay <laughs> someone got lucky <laughs> let's pick a last call good morning we lost it okay seems that we'll just round up here uh let's take a quick break uh, now when we come back of course it will be time to uh, have a uh, first discussion so stay with us human beings know what is right if they don't want to do what is right, they will give you 1,001 reasons why they are doing the wrong things. So they see themselves as conquerors, and other people have been conquered. When the, when the opposition and the press keep parroting that phrase, government has failed, government has failed, but we will not be here, hold on, mm. we will not be here, sitting down here, if government has failed. There has been almost total collapse the security of it. And the terrorists are taking advantage of this. Being on that, a country that has about 923 square kilometer of arable land, not more than 2.5% has been cultivated. Of course, you, the Nigerian citizen, will also have your say via our phone in numbers on your screen. The issue of uh, appointment in Nigeria has become more political than doing the right thing for the country. The famed giant of Africa is battling an identity crisis with severe economic downturn. We have seen during Shagari, fall of Naya, but Babangida's time was historic. It was unprecedented. All Nigerians. The Nigerian economy has been in steady decline. No growth and a sharp drop in production makes matters worse. The more you push your economy, to get integrated into the global market economies, the more you increase the use of dollar. How did we get here? We have been working every nook and cranny, running helter-skelter, trying to seek dollar so that we can also meet with the demand of our people. 
And the same Nigerians will turn around and say, CBN should supply dollar into the market or government should supply. Where are you going to supply from? As the value of the Naira plummets, is obsessive comparison with the dollar helping matters? Once people believe that the currency cannot retain its value, they find alternative ways of, of savings. Why is the Naira on a free fall? And what are the solutions? Journey with us back in time to where it all began. We started manufacturing leather since 1958. But the most important thing is that if the system is checked correctly, we won't, we won't have where we are now. If somebody has depression, they may just be very irritable and unproductive in the office. So you find on average already about one in four, one in five Nigerians already have a mental illness, a mental health condition that needs some form of attention. Uh, no matter how good an economy is, if the federal government goes past, believe me, everything in that economy is just a matter of time, it will go past. Uh, so first of all, about uh, maybe slightly above, below 70% is in federal government securities. If government has uh, banned importation of fertilizer and states are doing it at the level of governance, but I believe that production and distribution of fertilizer should be left to the private sector. Uh, this is the general multipurpose card and it has a chip here. So this chip is about 80 kilobytes. The one that you get from the bank for ATM is just 4 kilobytes. So this is like 20, 20 times. Hello viewers, welcome to another episode of Adam's Kitchen on Trust TV. Try grating it. No. I am going to show you how to prepare a Singaporean chicken rice. Like this. Back here and get my carrots ready. Put in some amount of um, oil on the skin. I will now go ahead and take off the chicken spread it to a desired shape And welcome to Creative Lounge on Trust TV. My name is Ahmed Mohammed Bello, and I'm going to be taking you through my journey as an artist. Are you interested in the latest news and developments in Nigerian politics, policy, governance and other critical national issues? Look no further than Daily Politics on Trust TV. Our panel of experts and key people in government provide in-depth analysis and commentary on the biggest stories in Nigerian politics. And 33.3 million Nigerians are suffering from multidimensional poverty. It's a much calmer Buhari than the Buhari who was in the khaki uniform. Naira to Naira S rate is higher anywhere in the world. The Naira is higher than the exchange rate. So you want to... Since Central Bank Governor you're doing, you must do it fast. The number of casualties we have had, we shouldn't have had. Security as far as Nigeria is concerned, we have wronged. From the inner workings of government to the latest on legislation, rule of law, implementation and democracy, we have you covered. Don't miss out on the latest political news and discussion. Tune in to Daily Politics, weekdays on Trust TV, your source for reliable and unbiased coverage of Nigerian politics. 
We started manufacturing leather since 1958. But the most important thing is that if the system is checked correctly, we won't, we won't have where we are now. If somebody has depression, they may just be very irritable and unproductive in the office. So you find on average already about one in four, one in five Nigerians already have a mental illness, a mental health condition that needs some form of attention. Uh, no matter how good an economy is, if the federal government goes past, believe me, everything in the economy is just a matter of time, it will go past. Uh, so first of all, about uh, maybe slightly above below 70% is in federal government securities. If government has uh, banned importation of fertilizer and states are doing it at the level of governance, but I believe that production and distribution of fertilizer should be left to the private sector. Uh, this is the general multipurpose card and it has a chip here. So this chip is about 80 kilobytes. The one that you get from the bank for ATM is just 4 kilobytes. So this is like 20 20 times. Why did you develop this reputation as somebody who is difficult to <laughs> work with? I will tell the truth. Mm. No matter whose ox is worn, I will say exactly how it is. This is where I actually sympathize with commissioners of nowadays. Mm -hmm. Where a commissioner sometimes is just a picture. You find somebody, even a cleaner and the governor's wife can interfere with their, with their abilities. Even the ministers, there are very many who respected me simply because I never complained about them. I never went to ask for a favor, uh, never. So none of that has happened? Nothing. But it, 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 if it hasn't happened, do you have hope that now the, another government coming in? There's no hope. So you've given up on, I've, I've on given politics? Up. I've given up. Politics. It's gone, it's gone. Retrenchment from work is the most hated thing by unions. It's a loss of job uh, means that is loss of life, in fact, for, for civil servants at that time. Nigeria's economy, Nigeria's security, Nigeria's intelligence, this is what the materials we were handling. And I thought government would be very interested. The reasons why you adopted federalism is not because of finesse, not because you like it, it's because of its functional utility. Welcome back. If you're just joining, this is Daybreak Extra coming to you from our studio here in Abuja. And quickly, we'll go into our first discussion. Uh, we'll be looking at crafting worlds with words, you know, crafting worlds with words. And uh, that brings us to, you know, talk about uh, script writing as the art and craft of composing scripts for various media such as film, television, theater or radio. It involves creating a blueprint that guides actors, directors, and other production members in bringing a narrative to life. So um, script writing uh, has to do with, you know, uh, the scenes that you create that is of reality, either from people's stories or fictions. Uh, a script typically uh, includes elements like dialogue, stage direct, uh, direction, and sometimes scenes description providing a foundation for the visual and inventory aspects of a performance or production. And we have joining us via Zoom from Kaduna, Yusuf Shamagana, a lecturer, uh, head of theater arts unit, Department of English and Drama, Kaduna State University. And he has eight years experience in writing radio drama for development communication. So today we are going to be talking about uh, script writing specifically for radio drama. Yusuf Shamagana, thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. Thank, thank you, Fatima, for having me. Uh, quickly, uh, tell us uh, what it means, you know, to write a radio drama script. Um, I think, uh, unlike any other, unlike any other, 
media, the writing scripts for radio is technical. Because as you know, radio is basically people call it a uh, blind man's uh, medium. So it means that for you to be able to write script for the radio, you have to go extra mile because unlike other media where with visual aspect, in radio you depend solely hearing aspect. So you have to imagine every via sounds and dialogue. And that is why writing radio drama script is quite more technical than other scripts. So I think it requires a higher of imagination, a higher degree of creativity, and then and you have to imagine it. You have to imagine a scene. You have to imagine an action taking place. You have to close your eyes at some point when you write your own script to imagine it. The script play out in such a manner that the people you are putting this script out for can be able to arrive with it. The sounds that we have, for instance, in a typical Nordrian market is different from the sounds that here in a typical Ibadan market. So how can you be able to do that in your script in such a manner that both the producer and the, when they go through the script, they can actually collaboration with the sound designer identify the accurate sound that you are going to achieve that scene. Mm. So, uh, so that is why, to me, I think video drama script is quite technical here to other scripts. All right. So let's talk about, uh, you know, scripting in general. How are you able to develop a story? Say you get a story from uh, the producer telling you, this is a story and this is how I want it to go. How are you able to develop it into putting your own uh, you know, dissecting it in a way that it would, of course, do justice to that story. Well, you know, you are confronted with a task, a story. First and foremost, what you should ask is, what is the aim of this story? What do we hope to this story? Now, I am talking from experience in the development community. You know, most of the stories in this sector are aimed at addressing a particular problem. So you have to ask yourself, what is the issue? Now, when you identify that issue, of course, these issues are identified on research, from research. You go into the field and you engage people that are confronting that particular problem. You ask what are the reasons? What are the keys of that particular problem? And then you try to imagine that problem from their own team. Just don't assume that it is a problem and we need to go and address it. What you see from the other problem is not actually the problem, just the symptom of the main problem. So once you get all these perspectives, then you come back and sit down. In the course of your own interaction, you may have identified individuals or events that could serve as your character prototypes or model actions that you can actually them out in the course of your own art. So at the end of the day, you pay attention to real events. You pay attention to the realities as they unfold among the people you are writing about they realize that storytelling at some point is easier, far more easier than expected. Because when you say you are going to sit down on your own and create everything out of your own emotion, yes, you might end up coming up with a very brilliant, but the question is, will that story raise among the people you are targeting? So if the, the people you are writing about readily identify with that story, don't have a story, no matter how brilliant you think, so that is why the human angle is always similar when you are writing a story. So irrespective of the brilliant idea your producer or your director may bring to your table, all you need to do is look at the human angle as a writer is pro-people. Okay, now as I said earlier, I'm talking 
from mass brands as a development communicator and as someone who has been writing radio for development. So when you are writing uh, a piece that is aimed at changing the behavior of the band, definitely you cannot sacrifice their own parties or their own perspective. So once there's those things, then you come back to uh, sensitive cultural nuances, like the practice people, what is their own worldview? What is the belief system? How do they speak? How do women, for instance, speak in communities? What is the relations like in that particular community? You will not come and write a script that when people see or listen to it, they will say, this is not us. This is not us. You understand? So once you identify those things, then you can be able to say, okay, you go to the technicalities. Now, technicalities, I mean, what is the fundamental writing a story? A story must have a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning actions that introduce us or familiarize the listeners or the audience with the situation world, with the people, with the characters in that part world that you have created. Now, what is the middle? What is the highest point of the drama action? That is the highest point of the conflict. And then what is the ending? The ending is illusion. So in a situation whereby you have, for instance, a particular individual who holds this belief that, no, I will, I will allow my children to be immunized. That's a problem. And what is the problem? The problem is perception is that immunization is wrong. So he comes in conflict with people who are getting that particular uh, practice. That is the conflict. So you now drive, like, and it has to be convincing enough. You don't need to make the conflict so abstract or moved from the reality of the people. So by the time you reach the zenith, the climax, people would have identified with his own perspective at the same time arguments of the people that are advocating particular practice. Okay, uh, and then hang it there, then you now begin to find a way to what to resolve everything. Now, solution, you know, don't forget characters like often excite emotional attachment identification with the audience. So you have to take him through a convincing process of and embracing that new behavior I promote him. If not, process is not convincing enough, the audience is not stupid. They will understand that, no, you just deploy this mechanism to resolve this conflict just to achieve your end. But in the real sense, that, that the, the pen advanced are more reason. So you have to bring a character that has quite an authority could counter such arguments. For instance, if, for example, his own argument is that it is to my religion. So you have to have a character, a higher authority to speak about the religion of an imam in that particular, uh, particular drama. And that imam must not be an imam of just a fictional imam. He should be well-read enough. He should advance Vincent arguments enough that when he comes and he discusses it with this character, the character will actually be convinced as if it is in a real life. And that is why when, you, when he finally embraced new behavior, it is expected that the people were, I think this man did not get it. I think the, the Lehman is, uh, is, is right uh, after all. So the only way you can be able to guarantee that particular people or that particular or the targeting can be able to what can be able to be into the behavior you are promoting. So it is quite a technical process. Mm. And this is one approach. Okay. Character okay. development, which is an important thing, you have to identify who the character is. Okay. That is what we call in some organ they call it X, what the character is, what is his own identity, what is his own temperament, mm. what is his own psychological disposition. And then we have the one. what does he want? What want to achieve? And then we have the Z. This is what is the obstacle stopping him from preventing him from achieving that goal that he set out. So when you have this formula, XZ, you can be able to navigate looking at character. You, you know, giving out details on what you're you're doing and how passionate you're sounding. It's really commendable. So talking about, I mean, you earlier mentioned something on how you try to resonate with the people. You know, the the people that would consume this thing. So. 
how are you able to balance you know the traditional storytelling uh with uh you being you know innovative bringing innovation approaches to it because you would agree with me that one thing that the viewers want is to always learn take one or two things from the thing they are watching mm. and one thing that i yeah. always pay attention to that i would tell myself is that script writing is one of the major thing that can Cook uh, the viewer to the glue, where uh, to the TV, where where uh, or or radio or listener to the radio, where someone will say something and you'll be like, hmm, how did that person come up with that statement? It's a powerful, catchy statement. So, mm -hmm. how are you able to hold on to that? Well, we're doing the traditional thing, but then you're bringing innovation that would definitely wow the the listeners or the viewers. Okay, thank you very much, Fatima. That's quite an insult question. You know, we are African society. In African society, we have a quite a large body of indigenous folk tales, they call them and whatever. So, and one of these you can actually make a to resonate with the people is when you go from the repertoire of on indigenous storytelling traditions. Mm -hmm. Now, in northern Nigeria, there have been films that have been that made it to big uh, screen that are actually drawn from indigenous folk. The same way with uh, radio. Now, in writing radio drama for the event, there are there are three types of stories you write. Number one is character story. Okay. Number two is character thematic story. And then number three is a uh, quick story. Now, quick story is a story that is aimed at just making people to laugh. It's to up this humorous uh, slant for the entire, or to the entire storytelling, to the entire script. Now, most of these quick stories are drawn from the usual stories that we have in our own societies. So that these are the stories that we adapt often and then give them new nature, new setting, and then match them with the character story, which is its own personal struggle that is noted with the information or the education as of that particular episode. So this is how you match these three components together, all these three strands of stories that to achieve a whole. So that, in fact, if it accurately, you will find out that you can make one, you are a character in that particular episode. You can match three stories, his own personal. You can make him also the protagonist in the quick story. Then you can make him also the protagonist in the thematics. And then in a single episode, you can use one to achieve these three stories. And at the end of the day, the people or as your audience will get the message, will identify with him in his own personal level that is from his own personal story, and then will follow and laugh with him because of his of the big story aspect. So these are the ways we bring, uh, we draw from our own existing storytelling tradition and then bring some innovation to achieve what we want to achieve. Like, is using one stone to kill three birds okay. in this site. Uh, so this is one of the ways. And there are many ways. Okay. Other uh, approaches. Earlier, Sumaya, maybe, Sumaya but this particular uh, approach is one you know, approach Storytelling, you, you know, it's different from the TV and transitioning to radio. And, you know, it has to come with imaginations, like you uh, rightly said. Uh, there's one thing that yeah. you know I always wanted to know. How do you create, what do you consider or the techniques you use in creating suspense and tension? in a radio drama that the listeners would be able to, you know, differentiate seeing it visually and hearing it uh, when listening to, to the drama? Sound effect. Sound effect is one technique that we use. You know, radio drama depends solely on that and sound effects. So it's either you end particular scene normally, we, we usually end episode with a cliffhanger. Okay? And that cliffhanger is announced through dialogue or sound effect. Now, through dialogue could be like, 
What? What is this? You will now have your end of episode music. And then the audience will be wondering, okay, what happened? And they will like to follow the next episode. Or you can end it with a crash. Maybe a little boy who is an apprentice in a particular uh, mechanic workshop. And boss is not around. And two of them are fixing a car. And after they fix it, one of them say he wants to test it to see whether it fixed accurately. And then the other one will be telling him, no, no, no. You know, our boss has asked us not to try this. He said, no, I will just test it. And the guy enters, you know, he starts the car. And when the car starts moving, and then, no, stop, 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 stop. And then we hear, then you hear a crack. Then you can end that episode. So you see in this particular, in this particular, ending it not necessarily with a that, but with a sound effect that signifies a crash. Then you will now, the audience will imagine it. Now, where has this guy crashed this car? Is he alive? Is he dead? What will, when the boss comes? What will be the fate of this man? What will the boss do? What will the boss see the owner of the car? So these are some of the ways that establish uh, suspense when it comes to drama. Uh, from what you're saying, it just made me realize how much of uh, a lot of you know chaos being uh, uh, guided into something constructive can be happening in your head. So I want to take a peek at that head of yours. But let's talk about um, writer's block. You know, how are you able to maybe sometimes you find yourself struggling to write? a script and all the ideas are not really coming how do you handle writer's block and what would be your advice for aspiring uh, script writers out there in ways to handle writer's block thank you so much for this question fatima right block actually is not something negative it is to me part of the creative process although it can be so 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 frustrating now in my own case, when I realized that I began to have a very uninteresting story, I know that reached it is the end of thinking of the old writer's block, as you said it. So what I do to get something that will take my mind off the writing, I could watch a film, I could just stroll out to a garden and just forget about writing. You know, I will try as much as possible allow my mind to wander back to the story that I'm writing. Most times, come back after when, the, when I come back, I usually get a headway. Sometimes, I will not get a headway. But for me, it means that I need to take my time off the more. So, for writers, for other writers, I will now include that once you experience writer's block, please just shut down everything. It is normal. You are very, very okay. Don't feel as if something is wrong with you. It is normal. Keep that. Take a stroll. Some sleep. Some can go to the movies. Do something that interests you to take your mind away. I bet you when you come back to revisit that story, you will see new revelation angles to that story if you are lucky. Understand? But when you find out that you are having that problem, please just risk. Because if you push yourself right, even in that part of the situation, then at the end of the day, you will even the characters in what you are writing behaving as if they are being pushed, they are being forced. Because writing is something like a spirit endeavor. When you are writing, and the, the inspiration is not flowing, and you're writing simply because you want to, 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 to meet line, it will show the character from their dialogue. You will see the characters. It's not like getting a child to go and buy something or to somewhere that you want to go. You will see from the faces murmuring and all of and that is what your characters okay. <laughs> will in the script. And <laughs> it will take people to, people can identify that, man, these are not just adding up. Right, so I advise uh, upcoming writers to really connect us block as part of the creative process and find something to do to cool in order to 
continue later. Okay, thank you so much for that insightful uh, 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 script writing for radio that you just gave us. I'm sure the viewers have learned one or two things. And we hope that when we invite you again next time, you will be uh, uh, available for us to, you know, join the conversation. Anytime, anytime, Fatima, I will be there by God's grace. Thank you so much. All right, uh, that was, of course, uh, Yusuf Shamagana. He is a lecturer, a head of theatre arts unit, Department of English and Drama, Kajina State University, uh, given uh, his perspective on uh, script writing, which was a very beautiful thing. So, of course, uh, with that, we have come to the end of today's show. We hope that you, uh, you know, were entertained. Uh, you pick a thing or two. I mean, something on the show at least puts a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, so uh, it will be a wrap up. Thank you so much for watching. Please do stick around for the sports weekend that would be presented to you by by Adini Ajishafe. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Do have a lovely weekend. And I am Fatima Ahmed Musa. Do have a lovely weekend ahead.